This is a BNK 1076 television analyst to be used by authorized shop personnel only. And look at somebody scratched a date code into it there. Try and get the lighting right. Looks like S9-3167. So this was some shop's pride and joy at one time. I've worked on the 1077 before. I've used the 1077, which is the one after this, to diagnose TVs. This is kind of an all-in-one, kind of crude, early... Uh, diagnostic tool for color and black and white TVs. It'll put out signals. It'll substitute vertical and horizontal drive, plate drive, grid drive. It'll do all kinds of stuff. None of it really very well. Of course, the newer VG91 and its companion are a lot better, but a friend of mine found this uh, this and the 1077. These are more rare than the 1077, but the 1077 seem to show up quite a bit. If you're getting into vintage TV repair, uh, this is definitely something you should acquire and fix because they always seem to need work. And working on it is like kind of working on a TV slash TV transmitter television station. They're not hard, they're not complex, the manuals are available online. Uh, like I say, it's it, you could get them cheap and they're kind of crude, but they do do a lot of stuff and will assist you in diagnosing and learning about television repair. So, this is a little different than the 1077. I don't know what, well, I, mean, I don't know what video and horizontal, I don't know what these are for. But so IF, this will put out from 20 to like 47 megahertz IF to use to diagnose, diagnose the old IF, the new IF. Then it'll put out on your regular television channels. Um, it'll substitute a sync signal. It'll substitute a burst color, 4.5. Uh, I guess that's 400 AC like uh, to test your audio amp then you have bias vertical grid drive horizontal grid drive an AGC keying pulse vertical yoke test signal this is I believe will this do the ringing this does not look like it'll do the ring test the newer the 1077 will do a ring test to sh check for shorted turns in a flyback or vertical output. I don't like the fact that this uses the mic connector. The 1077 uses a regular BNC, but at least we have one here so we can make make a cable. And then these are just banana plugs. It'll do video positive and negative because sometimes it's inverted depending on how it's designed. Uh, let's take a look at the inside. If you're not familiar with this, if you haven't seen my videos on this, this one's all tube. The next one, the 1077, has more solid state. It uses a flying spot scanner tube. And it uses an ultraviolet CRT, and it projects the image... It projects this image onto that flying spot scanner tube and outputs it through the RF IF and there were several different slides of course you could make a custom slide this is your crosshatch I guess if you were really desperate you could use that but the problem is, is the vertical linearity output of this device is dependent on the way you have it adjusted here. So if you don't have this adjusted right, your TV is going to be adjusted wrong to this. So anyway, enough blabber. Uh, the gentleman that got this for me, a lot of wax capacitors, look at that. Gentleman that got this for me 
I said it it the tubes lit up and it didn't work so I, I think we should try and fix it so here's the tube chart So we'll start with our dim bulb, which is on full brightness. And we have a standby, which is filaments only, and then we have a B plus, which turns the, uh, an on, which turns the B plus on. I don't know, well, okay, I can understand why you would want a standby in case you were hooking it up to a TV, but I hope there weren't people who just left it on standby and just cremated all the tubes so let's go to that's interesting when I go to when I go to on it doesn't get any brighter let me get a bigger bulb okay now it's starting to get a little brighter when I go to so we definitely don't have a short. All right, I just went to bypass. Neon bulb is lit up. Let these tubes heat up a little bit. Let's, uh... Ooh. I hear that. This should have a purple, purple glow to it. Oh wait, there it went. It just started going. Man, it took it forever. So see how the vertical deflection is not, it's not filling the whole thing. A lot of times on these in the past I've found where the yolks go bad that they get uh, green corrosion and I fixed a couple of them. You can do microsurgery if you can find the open where the you know it corroded the leads corroded open on the yolk and peel them back and and bridge them. This one's working. I almost think we need to just get a set and see what it looks like. We got a little 2000s Panasonic here that should work pretty good. So let's see what happens. I'm on channel 4. I'm on channel 4 here. Turn the RF all the way up. Looks like we're getting some interference there. Oh, ooh, oh, you know what? I need to close the lid because the light screws it up. See that? If I cover, if I let me close the lid here. Oh, yeah, there it is. See what I mean? See how the... Wow, that works good. How about the color? Well, a little bit. You could kind of see color there. It's going to be noisy because I don't have enough. I just got this through a clip lead connected to the antenna. So it's not going to... You know, it needs a proper connection so let's 
See the color bars in the back there? Wow, it works. Wonder if we can do IF. Let me go to IF. Uh, IF isn't going to make it through the. F well, maybe. There's IF. The IF makes it through. That's pretty good. Oh, hell yeah, the IF makes it through. The color is kind of weak. Okay, so it's not bad. The color is weak. And I, I think it could be the pot because it has no adjustment. So we could check that. But let's first clean the tube. And... Come on, I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Let me, this is like a camera. Let me uh, clean this. All right, I cleaned the tube off. So let's do this. Um, these are the adjustments down here. Yeah, I have the manual on this, but that's no fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tweak on these. This this is all assuming that this TV is perfect, okay? So we're going to assume that the Panasonic is our standard. The little Panasonic TV here. So let's see, what's this one do? Oh, I don't know what that does. It looks like horizontal hold. Okay, we'll leave that alone. Let's try this one right here. Got a lot of capacitors in here. Oh, there we go. Okay. That looks like uh, linearity. Let's see, what is this one right here? Oh, there we go. Okay, so see how that's bringing that? See how that's bringing that? down when you look at it it's bringing it up it's bringing it down here see what i mean see how bringing it down brings it up here see what i mean so between that one boy that's still a really weird shaped test pattern and this one Okay, this one up front is um, uh, brightness, adjust the brightness of the CRT. Now that is a really weird shaped test pattern. Again, all the noise in it's just because I'm using a clip lead as an RF connector. That is a really weird shape. We really don't care about that because I'm not going to be using this damn thing for calibrating a CRT anyway. I get the VG91 for that. But as far as the rest of the functions of it, hell yes, we'll use it, especially the 25 megahertz IF. So, let's see what else is in here that we can turn and mess with. So that's. I think that's it. See, in doing that, filled out, filled this out, top to bottom. So check this out. I don't know if this is going to show up in 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 the camera because the camera will try and sync. But you can actually see the duty cycle of this this headlamp I'm using. Watch this. So see how small the bars are there. That's low duty cycle. That's low. That's full. Let me do this. So that's low. Okay. Low. Medium. Man, I hate these software operated lights. 
that's full. Low, two, three, one, two, three. So see how you can see the duty cycle getting bigger? That's a trip. All right, let's pull the bottom off. I'm tempted to recap it just to make the internet happy, but as little as I'm going to use it, it seems to be working very good. Let's pull the bottom off and look and see what kind of capacitors are in it. I already saw some of those white ones that should go uh, and clean that color pot and see if we could get that to work. Ooh, sun capacitors. 0.1 at a thousand volts that should go oh it's warm damn it is warm it's not burning hot but it's definitely reforming I notice there's two diodes bridged across the tube rectifier too Damn, this is warm. Maybe that's why it took so long to come up because the capacitors were reforming. Eh, whatever. So let's spray this color pot. It certainly does not look like it's working. What happens if I take and short it here? Nothing. There's very little color. I would expect that to to blow out with bright color, but maybe I need to adjust the fine tuning. I don't know, that TV should have like AFT in it, AFC. Interesting, I see what's going on here. Uh, this pot controls the, attenuates the signal level to the test point here, not to the RF signal. So this is not the problem. In fact, it's not even producing color anymore at all. It's just producing bars. I think things are changing. Look at look at how it's pulled down from the top and look at how it's 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 shrinking or it's it's going up. It's getting taller on the top inside. It's yeah. So this I believe this is what creates the color right here. So this must be a tuning issue because if I go to two, if I go to channel two, I get really bright, vibrant colors. Like, look at that. So you can adjust the channelization right here. I don't know which one is which. Let me get a thingy. We'll adjust them. Assuming, again, assuming the Panasonic is perfect. So that's five. That's four. That's three. Now it's now it's working. I don't know. Let's go back to four. Four it, it can't lock on to it. It's out of its range. See, it starts to lock onto it, then it loses it. So we need to adjust four, but I tried turning these. I don't know which one it is. Um, I don't want to start just... Okay, so here's the manual. So, let's see. We want to adjust... Number four is that one. We want to adjust the top slug. All right, so we want to adjust the top slug on this one here. This one top. Let's just try and adjust that to where the color pops in. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, there we go. Ooh. 
Ooh, a crystallized. Oh, now I can't turn it backwards. Oh, shit. Okay, I got it pretty close. Um, we definitely have capacitors failing, though, because look at, look at what's happening here. I mean, I can readjust it, but still, it needs a recap. Or they're reforming, I don't know. I had to turn it a lot to get it back, so... Uh, we have a winner here. We really do. I'll just make this a quick Sunday video. I might recap this. I might not. Like I say, I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't use these a lot because I have the more high-tech VG91, the computer computerized stuff. But I might use this if I'm working on an older set with a 25 megahertz IF. This is nice because it'll also simulate horizontal output if you want to check the flyback. Like I said, the 1077 does have uh, a ring tester. It's not great, but it's there. It makes you feel good, I guess. But anyway, you can pick these up cheap. They're fun to play with. The manuals are available. Um, it should probably almost be mandatory that you restore one of these before you restore your first vintage TV. And then you can make whatever freaking slide you want for this, you know. You could you could make a middle finger if you want it. Let's I'll, let me clean this one and we'll slide it in. All right, I, I washed it off with water, and everything in this is cigarette covered with brown cigarette glaze. This, you know, 1960s is when. Everybody was telling you cigarettes were safe and effective. Hey, more doctors smoke camels. Cigarettes are safe and effective. So they just dropped that one for a minute and then brought it back, didn't they? Anytime, anyway. Okay, how do I get this damn thing in here? Oh, it doesn't want to fit. Really? Well, maybe cigarettes are safe and effective. What the hell do I know? They sure did a good job of... of uh, there we go. They sure did a good job of uh, preserving some of this old stuff. There, we, there you go. Turn the color bars off here. Oh, hell yes, that's very safe and effective. See what I mean? Now, if you went and you tried to calibrate your damn TV to that, you'd be like, uh, there's something wrong with my TV. No, there's something wrong with the generator. But, whatever. Kind of cool. Of course, you could make your own slide. You could make whatever you wanted. There's no rules. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here because it works. Just make this a quick video. Um, you'll probably see this used in some future resurrection. I need to get back into the resurrections. I'm in the middle of some other more pressing stuff. But once that's done, we'll get into the deep resurrections. i got plenty of them here. And um, yeah. BNK 1076. And 1077 are the two. And the instruction manual tells you how to use it, what all it can do, all that good stuff. And that just looks cool, you know.